Let me explain to you how the world works. Between now and December 25th, you're going to see all your favorite Destiny 2 content creators post nearly daily if they can help it. The reason for that is because our ad rates collectively are sky high. So we're going to earn more per video on average than we have all year. Our priority is to get as many videos out there as humanly possible because after December 25th, all the ad campaigns are done, all the big companies go home, you go home, I go home, we all just lounge around, eat turkey and get fat. So speed is of the essence here. We're going to go really, really fast so we can be really, really slow later. That's why you're going to see a lot of sensationalist stuff in your timeline. Everything is either good or really, really bad. There are no neutral takes, there are no nuances, and the Senate Nomad has given up script writing and actually started to upload. It's a weird time. So what does that mean for Stay Frosty, this video? Well, when I was using this weapon, I immediately, immediately clocked exactly what kind of content was gonna be put out. It's gonna be a little about Desperado being super, super great, which is true. Or it's gonna be about the fact that it's just not able to compete, which is also true. There are exaggerations of the fact that Stay Frosty is just a very average, pulse rifle. If the answer you're looking for for this video is that should you, are you missing out by not getting it? The answer is no, you're not. But I'm going to try and explain to you as quick as I can while respecting your time as to why that might be the case. So at its core, Stay Frosty is a kinetic ogma. It is a kinetic stasis lightweight pulse rifle. And statistically speaking, it's actually very, very similar to the ogma and it feels quite similar as well. The ogma has 38 range, 52 stability, 70 handling, 55 reload speed, and 73 aim assistance. Stay Frosty has 38 range, 52 stability, 67 handling, 56 reload speed, and 70 aim assistance. Those are identical stats. There's one stat though that kind of negates that though. The Ogma has 19 zoom and Stay Frosty has 18. And the differences are so slight, but it's enough to notice. And the main area where you do notice them is in PvP. When you use the Ogma in PvP, you'll notice that you can comfortably sit back and engage, and you can do a decent amount of damage while doing so. You can kind of sit back at messenger ranges and put in some work. And that's really handy in this current meta where everyone is invisible and using abilities, and getting up close and personal is a bit of a dice roll. With the Stay Frosty, because it's 18 zoom, you just feel that if you play it like you play the Ogma, you're going to be doing a little bit less damage all across the board. And that hurts your TTK, that hurts your effectiveness, that just makes you feel like the gun is bad, when in reality, all you need to do is step about three feet closer. Now, doing that because of the invisibility and the ability spam is a risky thing to do. You do not necessarily want to be going into the Crucible with a view of getting up close and personal unless you're in competitive. In normal 6v6, there's just too much going on, and the play right now is to stay back and just try and observe everything from afar. Not a particularly fun meta, I must add, but it is one of the most effective ones if you don't want to be dragged into all of that nonsense. Or maybe you're just an average player or even a below average player and you don't want to get involved into a battle of reflexes. Totally understandable there too. Now, lightweight pulse rifles as a whole have never been the best in PvE. When I was using it in Heist Battlegrounds, which by the way is my personal barometer for how good a weapon is in PvE, it just felt like it didn't hit hard enough. Red bars were a challenge and orange bars felt like bosses. And when it came to ultras, forget it. Now in fairness, no primary weapon is ever going to be able to do sustained DPS of a meaningful fashion to any major boss, unless they have Vorpal Weapon and four times charm and other you know, damage boosting perks. However, the Stay Frosty, just like the Ogma and the BXR Battler in this category of pulse rifle, they, they really feel like wet noodles here and it doesn't feel right to use them without damage boosting perks. In PVP, it's a different story altogether. Stay Frosty, like the Ogma and the BXR Battler is one of the most forgiving archetypes in the game, requiring only seven crits out of nine shots and a three burst pull to get a kill. They are really, really strong when they work, and they're such a good option if you are somebody who struggles to get perfect crits. But like I said before, in this, this particular model with 18 zoom makes getting kills a little tricky in this meta. If you were in something like the 30th anniversary meta, I'd say this would be one of the best options because it's low zoom, you can be aggressive, you can get in people's faces, you can challenge SMGs and sidearms and all that, but it's that on top top of the ability spam that makes low zoom weapons particularly tricky. You really need something that can kill in that 0 0.6, 0 0.7 second band, but this doesn't even come close at a 0.87 time to kill. Now, in terms of perks, we do have quite an interesting selection here. We have Offhand Strike, which says final blows grant additional weapon range stability and accuracy even firing from the hip for a short duration. Now, 
I don't know who's firing from the hip with a pulse rifle, but for a low zoom pulse rifle, in theory, where you are going to be taking up engagement spaces which are a little bit further forward, that's not necessarily a bad idea. It is a different way to open up engagement spaces which otherwise wouldn't be open to you. But then again, the whole question of how much are you willing to deal with the ab ability meta comes back into play. We have Tunnel Vision, which got an update for this season where you can con continually refresh it instead of it being on a timer, which is really good for synergizing with Kill Clip and Desperado. We have Moving Target, which is probably the best neutral perk on this weapon that you can get. Then we have Encore, which is a bit of a niche perk, but can be really, really cool under the right circumstances. Now, in column four, we have Head Seeker, which I don't recommend on this weapon because, first of all, it's already really, really forgiving as it is. You don't need the extra forgiveness, and it doesn't fundamentally change the time to kill if you do so. Kill Clip is by far and away the best damage perk here because it does turn it into a two burst, and that's huge. It goes from a 0.87 to a 0.6-ish time to kill. And that's really handy at all ranges, at all situations. Two bursting with a lightweight, it feels really, really good. If you've never used a BXR with kill clip, you're missing out. Desperado. Okay, let's talk about Desperado. So Desperado on the whole, it does boost the fire rate quite nicely, but it doesn't feel scary effective. It just feels like I'm using something normal. It doesn't feel like the, the, the super, super feared perk that it once was, and that's largely because it isn't anymore. They definitely nerfed the fire rate uh, a couple of seasons ago, and now Desperado just feels like a nice option rather than a must have. On this particular archetype, I don't feel like it helps its effectiveness all that much. Yes, your TTK does decrease, and that is noticeable, and it is absolutely worth it if that is your only priority. But the thing is, because this weapon is a little harder to use anyways with this 18 zoom and requiring you to push in a little bit further, it does require somewhat of an advanced user in terms of positioning, in terms of gun skill, to be able to make the best use of that. For the average player, I would actually argue that Desperado doesn't help you that much uh, because you have to get close Beho because you have to wade into the quagmire and the, and the and the general ickiness of abilities in which case you want something that can kill quicker something that can help you get in and get out or if you time it right keep you in that fight for longer and i think kill clip is a better option here because it does much better damage across the board to complement your abilities. With Desperado, you kind of are locked into just firing as fast as you can because you're on a six second timer. You're on a six second timer with Kill Clip, but Desperado, there's that, there's that pressure because you still have to get forward and you still have to get into the optimal damage band of this weapon. With Kill Clip, your damage is boosted across the board. So you can actually afford to play this gun in such a way where you stay back and you put in damage from far, from Ogma distances, right? We were talking about that. If you do have Kill Clip, you can two burst pretty much everywhere, or you can choose to three burst from further back. It gives you another dimension to this weapon, which is badly missing, and it's what it needs. It needs that safety from distance in this current meta. So for that reason, for all the other reasons I just said, I would actually say in practice, Kill Clip is the better option here. And to my admittedly average-ish hands, I feel like I was getting more mileage out of Kill Clip than I was Desperado. Desperado on Messenger, fantastic. Desperado on Disparity, beautiful. On Stay Frosty, I don't think this is quite the answer here. Now, you might see a video from somebody else who might say it's the best thing since sliced bread, but keep in mind their skill level. Keep in mind how they're getting those kills. Keep in mind their aim, their positioning, their movement, their game sense. For people who can aim, who can position themselves right, this is a fantastic uh, perk because it gives you the surprise factor that nobody's expecting. For everyone else, which is most of you, and it's definitely me too, I think Kill Clip is a better perk. The rest of the perks are PvE perks. We don't particularly care about that. Adaptive munitions could be interesting for GMs, but then, you know, new purpose exists and it hits harder. So to sum up, I think if the question you're asking yourself is, am I going to miss out by not getting this weapon? My personal belief is no. I don't think this weapon alone is worth logging in and grinding for. I think it's one of those weapons that you just kind of naturally get as you're doing activities and it feels good. It feels great. And it's, it's a good feeling weapon. I don't want to take that away from it, but it is statistically inferior to other lightweight pulses. The only one that it's better than is Chattering Bone, and you all know how I feel about Chattering Bone. You're all wrong. Sh Thank you very much for watching. I hope I didn't ramble too much. Let me know if you like this kind of video and I'll do more of them. Just kidding. I'm going to do them anyways because it's a holiday period and this is faster than writing a script. Thank you very much. I'm a Sun Nomad and I'll catch you tomorrow. Cheers.